I spent 10 years, 11 years now, in and out of the hardware scene, like the maker scene, and like the entire time growing up, I didn't really get like an actual community. Every year, um, you know, I'd go somewhere there, but there's no online community, and like the few online communities you do find where people like make stuff, it's all like 40 year old people, and it's like, what the heck, man? Being able to do hardware, actually able to physically touch what you build, I think there's, there's just something really special about that, right? Um, just so exciting. So, so excited. Can't wait to see what y'all do. Everyone to become friends. <laughs> Shut up, Kevin. Hey, I just knew what I wanted to show you. We were upstairs and we got the floor. <laughs> the story of how two teenagers made something they've always wanted to see in the world. Toiling night and day, hopping on long calls with people to help them build amazing things. This is the story of Under City, the largest four-day hardware hackathon by teenagers for teenagers at GitHub HQ. Hi, I'm Akon, I'm 18, and I started doing hardware eight months ago. It was kind of a crazy idea. I've been organizing hackathons for like a while now. My gap year is ending, I want to organize something big for people. I was like, could we do something like this? Is it 180 hackers here? No, I think the number started out as like closer to 500. <laughs> yes. And I was like, let's tone it down a little bit. And then we finally agreed on about 200. Yep. What Akon first pitched was like a hardware for Sackathon, which I had like wanted to run since September 12th, 2023. I think altogether it's a team of like 10, 15 people, and there are 166 attendees at this event, not including staff, not including friends, just attendees. So we're at like 200 people in this whole building. And yeah, we'll see how this actually goes. Um, very excited. We are getting ready to set up at GitHub. How much sleep did you have last night? I got seven hours. It was oh, okay. Oh, these are the sticker sheets, actually. Yeah. 12.55, hack lovers are starting to like line up around the door. One o'clock hits, and, and we don't actually open the doors because we are running a bit behind, but then it's like 110, and then like we're like, okay, we can start checking people in. And like all of a sudden, teens are funneling through. The venue is still being set up. Our opening slides still aren't done. Our schedule still isn't put together. Our workshop plan is still not figured out. Our badges still don't work. Oh, no. Wait, I'm about to tweak. No. But that's okay because we hit all of that inside the organizer room. So when people came in, people were just meeting each other. People were like super excited because like every single person who came here had to build a project to be here. It wasn't like, oh yeah, let me show up to this random Bay Area hackathon. It was like, man, I built something to be here. Kill it! ceremony just ended and Reagan got an absolute genius idea. Akon said that she wants a 3D printer made out of cardboard and I thought 3D printer would be cool but an RC car is also cool so we figured we should make one that does both. It's like a 3D printer that has an arm. We're gonna put a it's star like a, arm on it. Yeah. And then print and drive around. You're gonna make a camera. Like a lot of our ideas that we brainstormed so far have the theme of inconveniencing. You think it's supposed to do one thing, but it really doesn't. Well, like we all like so far is the screaming alarm clock idea. Basically what it does is I just screams your name and it gets like louder and louder and the tone changes as the time goes on. So we were like planning on like doing something based off Dragon Ball Z and slowly up on my computer. It's like a rough idea. We'll, we'll see We'll see how far, I, well, it probably won't look this good. Our idea is a omnidirectional motion robot using uh, a mechanum style wheel you have a actuatable drawing agent so that it will be able to draw pictures based on XYZ coordinates that we feed it. You basically just said a lot of nerd stuff there. What that basically means <laughs> is that we have a whiteboard that's digital, use a pen, and then our moving robot will move to those coordinates. So it'll redraw what the user draws on screen. I'm Luke, I'm 15 years old, and <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to make the most complex battle bot we could. We're gonna build a shuffling drum spinner robot. It'll be a combat robot that has legs and can walk, but it'll also be having a spinning weapon. So I'm gonna make a hexapod, or like a robot with six legs, and I'm gonna put a turret on the top of it. So now I have a spider robot that can shoot Nerf bullets. And our project we are working on is a little mini arcade machine kind of like a time-based thing with buttons and LEDs. Uh, we've got a bit of a uh, mock-up for now. It's not to scale, but 
There will be a few uh, rows of LEDs with switches and Harry will be in seven segment this place to show the score. You know the password game where someone puts in a code and then the other person has to like guess the code in a certain number of tries. You have those little pegs that you put inside. What if we make like an electronic version of that? But instead of like the pegs, which are really boring, you have like Minecraft flowers. Yeah. I've seen a lot of really cool ones. Yeah, yeah, like, this one girl tried to make an alarm clock but like runs away from you. Like it's really hard to press. And like there's another person who's like trying to make wings. What are you most excited for? Oh, oh, the talent show today, 11 p.m. There's a group upstairs who's like dancing to Soga Pop from K pop the Hunters. They're like just learning the dance today. They're like, Attention for a second. The speaker is very quiet. So we need you guys to also be very quiet to enjoy our masterpiece, all right? <laughs> I think there's two reasons why people shy away from hardware. Firstly, the barrier to entry up front is like higher. Not only do you need um, like your computer and everything, but you also need to go out and buy like an Arduino, like wires, jump cables, twice that when everything blows up. To experiment with new things, it's usually another upfront cost. Right now it's like one in the morning, pretty tired, but yeah. Everyone's kind of going into their sleeping mode now. Pretty cool seeing all the projects people are starting to make. We will see how day two goes. Here's all the hardware we have. If you want any, come oh. up to me. Yeah, it's for what you want. And if I know what you're saying, I give it to you. I'm very bad at finding shop items. So the hardware shop is where people can come and talk to me about their problems, basically. They come and they're like, hey, I need stuff. This is what I need. And I give them their stuff or I walk them through problems. They'll be like, hey, okay, I'm struggling with this thing. How can I do that? I'm gonna need like servo motors. How powerful do they need to be? Like what specs do I need? I'm like, okay, hey, you can use this screen. It'll look really cool. Or you should use this screen. This one's gonna be easier to use. If I can be there for the first experiences, like I, I love it so much because I, I was there. I went through all of that. And you know, if I had someone to like hold my hand through it or like even to help a little bit, like I, I would give anything. Oh, man. Um, What's up gamers? <laughs> Welcome back. What's up gamers? Robot, it's, it exists. We're just waiting on some 3D printed parts. It's probably gonna swap these out for some custom 3D printed ones. Essentially, you're able to get it to fold toilet paper. Maybe come back later. <laughs> I'll come back. <laughs> we actually have this cool little thing here, the depth camera. We were walking around SF and we saw the Waymos and we were like, cool, what if we made one but smaller? So we've started working on our SCAR linkage, so we got it all printed out. It's powered by two NEMA 17s at the bottom. This is going to be the X, Y, and Z axis for our 3D printer, yeah. There's this one game called Word Hunt that everyone plays. You have a grid of letters and then you find words and that's basically it, right? What we decided to do is make an XY gantry system uh, with an Apple Pencil um, and a, a camera and a Raspberry Pi 5 to play the game for you and then destroy your friends. I'm making essentially the world's smallest Kindle. When I open up my Kindle, I find that there's just too many words. It's hard for me to get through all of them, but I figure if I make a really small e-reader that only shows you one word, it's way easier to use. So then if I plug it in, you've got the two buttons so you can scroll one word forward and then one word back. And then if you hold it down, it's like those TikToks where the subtitles show up one word at a time. So the question is, will this make me a faster reader? We'll see. It can like detect if the That's person awesome. is there. Um, it can even do like a bottle. So like if you take a can, it can detect that the bottle is there. We're building a mechanic uh, foosball machine. We had like three like ideas before this. We were just like floating and we didn't really decide. But this morning we, we kind of decided to do a foosball machine. We gotta pull an all nighter. <laughs> Our project is a 3D printer, but it prints chocolate instead of plastic. Uh, so far, we have this Y axis and kind of a frame. I still have to tighten that down. No chocolate 3D printer has been designed in 72 hours and under $1,500. We're making a 3D version of Snake. If you can see the blue dot that's moving around and going to the other panel, instead of just stopping, the Snake with the user input with a joystick, it can go up, down, side to side, and this really opens up a world of possibilities for user interaction. The user can find new ways to find the apple. One thing that's really surprised me as I spent more time at Hack Club is a lot of people in software believe that like 
yo, hardware's not my thing. I can never do hardware. Hardware's like black magic. Like, I really want everyone to walk away from this feeling like I am a hardware hacker. I can build hardware projects. Anybody who thinks, oh, I have to have like a 3.97 million GPA, or like I can only do it if I've been doing it since I was eight. I started six months ago. I do nothing about hardware at all. Like, you don't have to be a genius child. I grew up playing with Legos and eating dirt. Like, same as everybody else. You don't have to be some genius child that grew up out of like MIT and who lives in like Silicon Valley and who has like founder parents. You don't have to be any of that. My parents immigrated from India, from like nowhere. They didn't have any of these resources. So I absolutely like hate the concept that you have to be a certain type of person to get into learning anything, even software. All right, I have to get into work. What time is it? I don't know. It's okay. caffeine time. It no, <laughs> it's, no. <laughs> this is not a four-day hackathon, it's like a one long continuous Red Bull fueled fever dream of hacking and I think that's how it should be. Like there are no days, it's just one long continuous sprint. People fall asleep whenever they their eyes get too heavy to keep open and then they wake up one hour later being like, okay, where are we at? Like what do we need to do? Out of a percentage, how much are you done? I say we're 70% done. I say we're 80. I say we're 99% done. We finished it and then we were like, let's make it better. Oh. So we, we, we step backwards, what's gonna be better than what's okay? We step backwards to jump higher. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We're gonna build a little desk thingy, desk widget, that will show like the parting flights by like moving a little tiny plane. This little airplane is made of wires and a bit of solder. And we have here the platform. Yeah, I'm gluing these motors in, so hopefully it works. Okay, it, it stops every 40 seconds. You need to replug it and plug it. Oh, okay. I don't know why. I'm ready. I'm... I know. I, I just it's know going you... somewhere. Right. Up and down. <laughs> and I, like, what is? How do you die? <laughs> because you go in one direction and then you and then you hit the back. Button. You hit the so, back button. So you oh. back up into yourself. So news flag, right? What? That's They're crazy. able to get the X and Y axis moving in home with the use of Clipper firmware. We got the extruder moving and melting chocolate. We were able to extrude some into this plastic. Ooh. So it extrudes it? It extrudes it. It's it so just needs to now like build it with chocolate. Yep. Progress report. We did the wiring and it's uh, working a little bit. I'm just about to test um, if the screen actually runs the code. If you like, if you spin this part, everything moves along with it. So it's gonna go up and down. Um, we also have servos. With programming servos. servos. We can press buttons to, when you press the button, it'll move the servo. So this is our gyroscopic mouse. We can move it like this and it moves on the screen like that. And I can click on stuff. So we have this IMU module in here and it basically detects pitch and roll. So with that pitch and roll, we had to search up quite a lot, but we finally got the mouse working and we made it all with CircuitPython, which is amazing. Are you going to be sleeping tonight? No! no. <laughs> So this is our project. It was meant to be a duck. It looks more like a penguin, but it's basically called duck off doom scrolling. This is a duck that sits on your desk and it'll track your head. And every time it detects that you're opening Instagram, X, YouTube shorts, it will squirt water at you. There's a shortcut that automatically runs when a app is open. And then that just sends a request to the laptop, a webhook, yeah. to a webhook, and then it tells the duck to shoot. For me, the hardest part of doing this was like, proper like power delivery. Every time we found like one solution, we realized that there's something else missing. Like for example, like we were powering it with USB-C. Then we realized, okay, it's not strong enough to do the servos. Okay, then we got a nine volt battery. Okay, that's not gonna work. That's too much, right? Then we got a USB power supply for a breadboard. And then eventually I gave up and I just hand soldered it right to the back of the power supply. Yeah. Legitimately, like I can't tell like, is the program crashing or is it a power delivery problem? So every time before we figured out like the actual problem, we'd be like, what's the problem? problem. Like this idea sounded so like silly and like stupid at the start, but the fact that I actually end up as like a polished product, I'm definitely gonna remember this like no matter where I am in the future. I spend most of my time talking with other people yeah. other than actually working on this thing. Just interacting with other people, it's very nice. That's like probably what I'll remember the most. If lives were changed, then that means it was a success. Does not matter what you do during the event. Does not matter if you get a project done or not. 
If you think that your life has changed and the way you make decisions after the hackathon is different, then the hackathon was a success to you. So the second way of measuring success on like the organizer side, the projects that are made. In terms of projects that were made at Undercity, insert the post that Dave said in front of the screen. There were a lot of really good projects at Undercity. I'm really impressed by what some people could make. You know, these are projects that like would probably win if you put them in like a large university hackathon. So yes, I think it was a success but also because Dave said so. Excuse me, sorry. Medium. You want medium toilet paper? Medium toilet paper right there. I got you. Wow. Yeah. Asynchronous RC car slash GitHub assistant. Why is this test on the bus? On um, most convenient location. Oh, oh, you can see here, like some are right, some are wrong. Trial and error, both ensures that you are able to change your music. No! <laughs> <laughs> So Podium, which is a peer building platform that we're using, is on fire because it has like never had so many people submit projects to it at a time before. Yeah. It's <laughs> but, but they don't know how much of a fire it's been, which is good. <laughs>